Oh my god, I did not think this through. <laughs> well, well, man. Are you, are you comfortable back there? Do you want to host this? A little, little arms. Little, never mind. Greetings! Uh, welcome to all this possibly positively negative. I, I don't know. What, I, this could be a minute long, in all honesty, mate, given what this, the source material is. But you, you know me, I could talk the back leg off of a horse. So Autodesk have released a new desktop app, right? And uh, the reason I'm covering this is because it, it, it gets given to everyone, so it's a wider target market, <laughs> bigger audience and all that. Uh, you know how it is. But it's, there's, oh, right. Let's let's go through some, there's some history, right? So it's all to do with Autodesk's desktop app, right? The, the front of shop to Autodesk's services and products. This is what we've had for the last seven years-ish. It came out in 2015, I believe. And not going to lie, uh, to me, this still feels new, right? Uh, I'm, I'm no spring chicken. Been around a bit. And uh, <laughs> Autodesk have also been around 40 years. So for this to only be seven years old, this is, I think objectively, it's quite new. And it wasn't perfect, but it sort of did the job. You would log in as, you know, your Autodesk account. All the Autodesk products you've subscribed to would appear here. If you want to install Maya, you just click that, click install. It installs Maya. If you want to update anything you've got installed, all your installed products are on the left-hand side. Your updates appear here. Not a massive amount of material to link to, but, right, forums, ideas, station, the, some knowledge network, bits and pieces, right? Bare bones, but stuff, right? All the products you've got installed, updates appear here, or combined, they appear here. Now, it's not perfect, and one of the reasons for that is staring you right in the face. I don't have AutoCAD installed. It's it's not there. Right, there there's AutoCAD there. I can install it if I want to. It's never been installed on this laptop, but there it is giving me an AutoCAD update. Okay, I don't want to click update. I don't know what'll happen. I don't want to find out. So it's not perfect, but it's got various settings, right? You know, you can change the download directories, the install paths and variables, all that kind of stuff. So it's been given some spit and polish over the years and it replaced the old Old? Uh, the old Autodesk Application Manager, which was actually vile. That was awful. That was a horrendous piece of uh, software. So in 2015, this was like the new, the big, all singing, all dancing, new front of shop for Autodesk. And uh, that I just thought, well, it's going to get better over the years. It kind of did, but then it just sort of stagnated. But no, last week, Autodesk binned this retired it completely and thought, right, we're going to start again for a third time. We've had the application manager, we've had the desktop app, we're now going for a new one in 2023 called Autodesk Access. Okay, be before I show you it, let's look at what Autodesk's competition is here. Th this is a, the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app. And the, re the reason I say this is competition, right, it, it's, it's fair, but it's also not fair. Adobe are a much bigger company than Autodesk in terms of revenue and staff. However, Autodesk licenses are more expensive than Adobe's. And their, their business models are almost identical. They both sell software as a service for professionals or small businesses or hobbyists. And the software is for design. The software can be updated. The software's got online articles and assets and marketplaces and all that kind of stuff. So at, at, at the core, the business models are quite similar. So the front of shop desktop app could in theory be identical. You could, you could just swap out Photoshop with Inventor right, or illustrate it with AutoCAD, change the categories on the left-hand side to, you know, mechanical design, electrical design, whatever else. It, it would just be like for like. But Adobe have done just a far better job. You've got a marketplace at the top where it's got, like, links to assets and bits and pieces that could be of interest. Now, it could be for 3ds Max or Maya or, I don't know, you know, anything that you can download content for, to, to ingest. There's a Discover tab for online tutorials and bits and pieces and providing that's updated on a regular basis. That could be of interest, something that you want to go into. Uh, all your files that you've created and stored in your, your your cloud account get stored in this files tab and then it syncs automatically without the need for a daft, ridiculously clunky desktop connector. Uh, and then it's beautiful to boot and it just works. Installs, updates, very similar to the desktop app, right? You've got your installs here and you've got your updates here. It's just Adobe did a much better job of it. But it's 2023. Autodesk have started again. They've went back to the drawing board on this and they've presented to the world Autodesk access. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Autodesk's new front of shop, their new attempt at a desktop app for 2023. After knowing the desktop app was going to be retired and give their customers something new, presenting... <laughs> Autodesk Access. No, it hasn't bugged out. It ha it hasn't errored. It like that's it. That's that's it. All right. 
full disclaimer, I, I've been on a meeting already internally with Autodesk alongside a, f- a few other people about this. Mixed response, as you can imagine. And um, th- there's a lot of, not necessarily promises, but statements of what it will do in the future. Because it doesn't do anything right now. Not at, like, not barely, at, well, say nothing. There's a couple of updates in here. But the reason I've called this video The Great Regression is because it is <laughs> factually, objectively worse than the desktop app it's just replaced. Now, that's from a consumer point of view. From a back-end point of view, Autodesk will disagree. They'll say, no, it's much more secure, it's much safer. All honesty, I don't give a flying f***ing high win what this is like at the back end. This is giving me less. I can do less with this. Besides, I also can't really... It would be unfair f- to expect anyone to take a corporation's word for what they've got planned for the future because we all know how that often turns out. Future guarantees or promises or statements about what could come, they, they mean nothing. So all I can really do is judge what this is now. And what it is now is, well, it's absolutely rubbish. It is. So for a start... The, the biggest regression by an absolute country mile is the fact that the desktop app gave you your subscribed products and allowed you to install them. This doesn't. It just bounces you over to the Autodesk website where you could have just logged in through Chrome or Edge and downloaded them from there. And this is like, yeah, we haven't fi- we haven't quite got around to that bit yet. So uh, how about you just go to the website and you do that like this didn't exist right uh there's no settings of uh, event i have to blur out my email address but there's 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 no settings of any description in here whatsoever that's now been removed uh, the updates on face value are exactly the same you've, you've got a a little snippet from the readme which is just a generic it doesn't even address what's in the update so that hasn't improved. And that's it. You click update and the same thing happens. It very well may be doing something differently in the back end, delivering it differently, but I don't care. I really don't. It's objectively worse than... So this begged a few questions from, from myself. Chief amongst those being, what the f*** have they been doing? They, they knew that this was being replaced. And it wasn't like, oh, we've got a couple of weeks to knock it up and get it out of the book. No, I mean, this would have been worked on for a quite considerable amount of time. How were they not at, at the very minimum able to reproduce what was already there as a starting point without regressing so far back that you, you need future, essentially empty promises just to get to a point where you used to be at? And like I say, when your competition is offering this and you're giving them that, what, 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 why? Why? Right. I can't talk about a lot of what was said in the meetings because it was all done under NDA, but according to the frequently asked questions, <laughs> which has been, of course, heavily curated, it's all been done because apparently the old desktop app was a little bit insecure. It was built on aging technology, which I still question. It's It was only seven years old. I mean, you know, if, if you got it wrong seven years ago, there's a very strong chance you can get it wrong again. But it's been done with admin controls and stability and... <laughs> control and all this kind of stuff in mind but there, there is none right now there is no control there, there is there is no options nothing so how do i remove hide or uninstall access right and, and i think it kind of speaks volumes when you, you read the first frequently asked question it's like right this is rubbish how do i remove hide or uninstall this this tribe well actually we don't believe it's necessary to uninstall <laughs> it's like um Hang on a minute. Shouldn't it be my choice whether or, whether or not this runs and, and gets installed? Evidently not. Autodesk are like, look, we we believe in and you will get it. You will you will be converted. So no, you, you can't you can't uninstall it, which I just find massively egregious. How do how do I prevent my users from installing updates? And then this is the bit that really got my back up, like big time, and a lot of other people as well. So so the ethos. The whole mission statement to access is greater control for CAD admins, which is and has been lacking for a lot of years. Autodesk have been woefully uh, inadequate at providing any sort of tools to let CAD admins manage updates across a big drawing office or an engineering site or whatever. So with Autodesk Access, it was built with admin controls in mind. So if, if you want to stop Bob in the electrical team or the entire mechanical team from installing updates you have to edit slash hack a simple it's not 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 a complicated it's a, a simple registry key 
which will allow admins to disable users ability to so they've just in a nutshell they've just released this brand spanking you for 2023 with the main bits of functionality is to stop users from installing updates but you can't do it from within the new thing you have to hack a registry setting which this doesn't facilitate you to do in any way you've got to do it through either group policy or walking to a pc and changing a registry key that's not that's just not good enough on any level at all that's absolutely unacceptable to say that this is a solution it's just it's daft so i mean you can read through this you can read through it. a lot of this is just all right we've got plans how do i prevent users from seeing certain products it's not currently possible but you know we'll, we'll, we might do it in the future does autodesk access work for enterprise or large customers yeah we've many plans for new features this it doesn't i don't it doesn't matter what your plans are mate it really doesn't it, it offers nothing right now. The way the world works, I just, I don't mean to sound patronizing and condescending, but a lot of people look at something that's new, make their minds up on day one, and then if it's not good enough, they just disregard it, forget about it, and they move on with their lives. They've got no intention of coming back to it later on. So if, the fact this has been released in this state will put a lot of people off and they'll never come back to it. Allegedly, evidently is plans to make this better in the future, but it's it's up to you whether or not you give that any kind of weight. It's It, it can't install anything right now. You have to assume that's obviously going to come back in, but we're still regressed further back than what the desktop app was. Will you be able to uninstall stuff whilst new stuff's being installed? Probably not, right? Because the licensed compliance team need a reason to find people for having old software kicking around on this PC, so it's probably not going to let you do that. Uh, the updates, you, you can't uninstall updates after an update's been installed. That's still not there, so it's... It's like a, it's almost like a reskin of what we already had, but they've just restored a version from maybe nine years ago. That's sort of what this feels like right now. And re repeat, what this is like at the back end, I don't care. It doesn't mean anything to me. It could work very well, maybe a totally different story in a year's time. In a year, this might be totally overhauled. It might be singing and dancing full of stuff better than the Creative Cloud app. You just don't know. Today though, it's a steaming pile of goat shit. And that's kind of where we're at with that. Oh, and, and another thing that I can't, like another regression, like the desktop app, for example. <laughs> another, one of the things that really knocked me when I first started using it, with the desktop app, right, it goes into the task tray, you can right click on it and you can sort of forcibly prompt a scan for updates. So the second you install something, you can force the updates to be found. Guess what's not in the access app? You go, so you come over to the system tray, you find access, you just basically got open and quit. There's no check now for updates. So if, if you're, you know, you've installed Inventor, you've installed AutoCAD, you're not seeing any updates in here, you've got no way to sort of forcibly prompt them through. Now they should refresh pretty quickly and be in there within a minute, within two minutes, but that's just you sitting around just twiddling your thumbs going, well, where the hell is it? What, where's my updates? So it's another regression. The team behind this, spoken with them, they appear to know what CAD admins would like to have. They, they've they got a roadmap. I, I'm just staggered that this was allowed to be bundled in with the coming releases and released in the state that it is. This is just a very, it's an embarrassing, it's it's borderline shameful to have this installed on enterprise, sort of high value customers PCs and have this is Autodesk sort of front of shop. They're, they're, it's their shop window. It's like, this is us, the introduction to us. This is where all your products are. It's your big portal to Autodesk. It's embarrassing. It really is. Will I revisit this if it gets better in the future? Don't know. Uh, I, I, I kind of give things a shot and then I move on. And that's sort of the nature of the beast with, with software. Uh, you, you can't keep revisiting every single update that comes out. Whether it gets drip fed stuff over the years, months, I don't know. Or whether it's like huge updates now and again. The, the whole point of this was to democratize updates, make them easier, make them more manageable. But there's one last point that I need to touch on, uh, which I did make an entire video on that I didn't release it because I felt, I don't, I don't I, it's a long story. But last, I think it was either last week or the week before last, Autodesk released an update to their desktop analytics component. It's the little box that pops up the first time you run any Autodesk software that says, we want to track your, your clicks and picks so we know what, which parts of the software you're using, right? It's an analytics feature that you've got no choice in having. You can turn, you can opt out of it, but it's, it's always installed. So Autodesk released a, a stealth update for this. Didn't prompt any users, it just, it just, it was the update was just streamed straight to, to everyone's PC without you even knowing about it. That in of itself was very, very bad, very egregious. It begs lots of questions. It's like what Autodesk can, what Autodesk have an endpoint into every customer that can just stream and what without prompt? You can just send files to people's disks. 
without prompt or notification, without any trace? That's not good. The update broke Autodesk Vault. There was very poor QC for this update. It wasn't tested properly and it broke a couple of versions of Autodesk Vault. The fix was again an automatically streamed update which just went out. That undermines the, for me anyway, it, in my opinion, undermines Autodesk access. If it's a program intended to give full control of updates to CAD admins who need to con control what updates all the users have got so Bob doesn't migrate Vault and have a different point release version, need to, need to be tests, updates have to be tested first in big corporate environments. Access is designed to facilitate those environments. The fact that Autodesk is stealthily streaming updates under the radar that can break entire data management sites, it undermines everything they're doing here. Completely undermines it all. It raises a lot of questions as well about morals and ethics of stealth updates and stuff in the background. So I did make a full video on that, didn't make it live, but that happened. Uh, it it wasn't great. And it, and it yeah, it, it undermines this. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. That's that I'll do for now. Thanks for watching. Um I don't know what to say. Uh, that's Autodesk Access on a PC, probably now near you or very soon if it hasn't been automatically <laughs> installed it's just probably another thing that's just going to update itself i don't know but uh thanks again i'll see you in the next one doodles <laughs>